October 1873, Texas country. Fort Clark was fast becoming a vital part of the border territory's expanding economy. Colonel Mackenzie's remote 4th Cavalry outpost depended largely on local settlers for forage, fresh beef, and horses. In return, the settlers grew to depend on the patrols of Cavalry Blue as their only protection against death from violent nature, from violent men. All right, Mr. Fields. We'll take all of them. Just give this to the paymaster at the post and he'll cash it for you. This doesn't look like McKenzie's signature to me. This requisition you gave me is a forgery. Well, he's been paid off now. And in full. Well, it looks like we bought ourselves some horses. All right, let's get him out of here. Colonel McKenzie had made the army uniform a symbol of absolute trust. But now this trust was reaping grim rewards. Colonel, Josh Benson is in your office waiting for you. He's been there for half an hour. What's his business? I don't know, sir, but he's all steamed up. I imagine he is. Huh. Mr. Benson? Colonel McKenzie? What can I do for you, sir? May I be frank, Colonel? Certainly. I will put it to you simply, Colonel. You are an inefficient commander. More killings done by men in army uniform, I gather. More killing by your troopers, Colonel. That's a very serious accusation. What else am I to believe? How do you explain this series of murders? First Adams, then Gifford, then Harry Town. You know them all as well as I do. And the only single fact to come out of it all is that the attacks were made by soldiers. All right. I admit that everything you say is true. Excepting those were not my men. Are you prepared to prove that, Colonel? How do you mean? I speak for 30 families. Families who are still alive, who have not yet been attacked. This group has sent me here to tell you this. Beginning now, keep your patrols away from us. We are prepared to shoot anyone in uniform and ask questions later. Give me no choice, Mr. Benson. You must be aware that my orders to this fort oblige me to protect the peace. To do that, I depend on my patrols. Now you're threatening those patrols with death. You're courting disaster, Mr. Benson. Perhaps. But until these assassins in uniform are dead, we must protect our lives. Good day, Colonel. Good day, sir. Sergeant. Sergeant. Sir? Order out another patrol. Ready to ride immediately. We'll be gone two days. Yes, sir. The marauders in uniform had to be stopped. To this end, Mackenzie led his troops out of Fort Clark to search the territory for some sign of the disguised killers. He found what he was looking for, more ruthless attacks on helpless ranchers. Hysteria was so great that every soldier was in danger of being shot on sight by frightened civilians, unable to detect protector from assassin. Mackenzie returned to Fort Clark, driven by the knowledge that immediate action was necessary to stem this widespread threat. Any luck, sir? Well, 
afraid this requires a little more than luck. Here. I got enough sand in my eyes to fill a bucket. I'll get the sergeant to hustle up some hot water. Oh, later, later. Lieutenant, everywhere I went, stories of men in uniform committing every crime in the book. Lots of them. Deserters, sir? Can't be. There aren't that many in this territory. Can't be regulars. There are not that many men out on pass. Sounds like the Jayhawkers during the war. Exactly. Professionals. We've got to break up this gang before they get more uniforms or they'll terrorize this whole territory the way they did Kansas and Missouri. Take a look. It is Horse Ranch. Pasadobo Mine. Stage way station. Hacienda Quintera. We got there an hour after they hit the place. Before that, here and here. Like scattered buckshot. Exactly. Buckshot has a pattern like that, arcing from the muzzle. Prieto. Prieto. The gun muzzle pointing right into the heart of our territory. I don't know what we're going to find there, Lieutenant, but that's where we're going to start looking, across the river. Across the river, sir? Tell me, Lieutenant, you ever hear of a man named Nolan? Uh, Amos Nolan. I don't think so, sir. Well, he's a scout, kind of a no-good drifter. I want you to meet him three weeks from today on our side of Devilhorn Ford. If my plan works out, I think he'll come out of Prieto with exactly the information we want. Well, can this uh, Nolan fellow be trusted, sir? Mm, I've often trusted him with my life. That's strange. I thought I knew them all. When you're in the Army a little longer, Lieutenant, you'll find out that you never know it all. Every day, something new. Yes, sir. Extraordinary circumstances once again forced Mackenzie to violate Mexican sovereignty. Following his secret orders, he crossed the Rio Grande, knowing that his capture in Mexico would surely mean his death. Are you alone? I don't seem to be now. Mind if I sit down? My name's Rita. What are you? Drifter? Saddle tramp? My name's Amos Nolan. I'm a professional scout. That is, when I need a job. Give these back to him when you see him again. Would it help if you had asked? When I want help, I'll ask. Just being friendly. Well, you next? No, thanks. I just want to say a man who handles himself like you do could find some work around here. Man, Scott Angles doesn't need a job. Fair enough. You're a scout. I can smell them a mile away. I suppose that getting paid for leading freighters into Fort Clark is your idea of an angle. You suppose right, mister. With me, that's a job. It's a job with angles. Uh, 
That's a fancy gun belt you're wearing. Yeah. A friend of mine makes them. Suppose he'd make one for me? Depends. On an angle? Sometimes a scout's information is worth a lot of money. Uh-huh. Well, like I told your friends, when I need help, I'll ask for it. Any idea when that'll be? Depends on how long my money holds out. The slow action around here, that'll probably be two or three weeks. I'm going back to the fort. You don't expect to find any action there? Maybe. Maybe not. Well, if you hear anything, I'll be here. Senor. Are you coming back? In three weeks. Well, what do you think of Owen? I don't know. There's something about that guy that bothers me. Exactly. Kansas? He's a scout. Like I told him, I can smell him a mile away. Yeah, he's got a sharp pair of eyes. He noticed your belt. He was admiring it. The kind of admiration I don't trust. I think maybe you better follow him. Settle up and get on his trail and let him out of your sight. We'll find out just how legitimate Mr. Nolan is. May 17, 1875. Mackenzie rode to his secret rendezvous with Lieutenant Summers at Devil Horn Ford. But a sixth sense warned him of something he had not foreseen. A few hundred yards across the river, Lieutenant Summers waited for Scout Amos Nolan. Under the watchful eye of the enemy, it was too late for Mackenzie to turn back. One salute, one word of recognition could destroy his plan. There was only one chance. I still say there's something snaky about him. Somebody's coming. Don't shoot! What? Snakey, huh? That saddled tramp would murder his grandmother for a plugged dollar. you jumped me. My watch. And your wallet. I'm sorry, Mark. I had everything set up, but they got suspicious and followed me, so I had to make it look good. When you found them? I think so. The next step is to make sure. Yes, sir. Now, look. We've got three weeks. Three weeks. I want every second to count. Yes, sir. First, you know where we can get a Conestoga wagon? A Conestoga wagon? A Conestoga. Yes, sir. I think so, sir. Get it. Yes, get sir. it. And have the carpenters start taking it apart immediately. Yes, sir. Another thing, Lieutenant. I want five men trained to 
hip shoot the eye out of a squirrel in the middle of a somersault. Sir? After two weeks of long-range practice, give each of these men a week's furlough so his absence won't be noticed. You got that? Yes, sir. I may be wrong, Mark, but I think they're going to attack in here again. They're going to attack an army freight wagon coming in secretly with something they need more than guns and bullets. A wagon load of army uniforms. Well, how are they going to find out, sir? From Amos Nolan? for a price. Get going, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Kenzie's plan to entrap the outlaws raiding American settlers in stolen cavalry uniforms would require split-second timing and precision-like teamwork. That's as sharp a squad as I've ever seen, Colonel. They'll have to be. Keep at it, Lieutenant. See you back at the fort. Yes, sir. Sent for me, sir? Yes. I'm leaving now. I want to go over with you once again exactly what I expect of you. Yes, sir. Now, remember, the whole operation depends on split-second timing. In the first place, I'm counting on their buying my information about that wagon and setting out for you. Yes, sir. So, you see, you'll really be on your own, because I probably won't be able to get back to you in time. I understand, sir. Now, if everything goes according to plan, you'll be escorting that wagon, and they'll attack you. Yes, sir. That's when we use surprise. Don't let them get too close. When you do open fire, shoot to kill. Every shot must take deadly effect. It'll seem strange shooting a cavalryman, sir. I know. Lieutenant, the whole success of this mission depends on you. It depends on your following your orders straight down the line. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. Oh, Lieutenant. Good luck. Good luck to you, Colonel. Let's see if your information's worth buying. Five hundred dollars first. Talk first. Lay it on the line first. That's better. The two convoys headed for Fort Clark. The second one's the one you'll be interested in. It's loaded with carbines and ammunition. And uh, what's in the first? Just a shipment of uniforms. Well, I guess you've earned your money. Keep an eye on them, Kansas. Why are you more interested in uniforms than in guns and ammunition? You'll see. you wanted the uniform. Yeah, and we got a lot of guys just dying to use them. All right, let's get on with it. Uh -huh. Well, let me tell you the trail that wagon's going to take. Oh, you're going to do better than that, Mr. Nolan. You're going to show us the way. That wasn't part of the deal. What do you want to be, uh, Kansas? A sergeant or a corporal? I'd hate to have a saddle tramp outrank me. There you are. Here you are, corporal. These ought to fit you. Put them on. We've got to get going. This was the unexpected, the one thing Mackenzie hadn't counted on. In uniform with these Jayhawkers, he'd be shot down with the rest. He remembered his own orders. Don't let them get too close. Shoot to kill. Following Mackenzie's timetable, Lieutenant Summers left Fort Clark with the Conestoga supply wagon, the bait to attract the marauders.
Lieutenant Summers knew this had to be the disguised renegade patrol. Mackenzie had done his job well. Get set. Now remember, keep a steady course and move when I call for action. Yes, sir. Pull out. Get in. Get in, Sam. No escort. Just one man on the seat and an officer in the lead. Sit and duck. Lead on, Scout. Mackenzie's voice kept mocking him. They'll be in cavalry uniforms. Don't let them get too close. I almost shot you, sir. I'm aware of that, Lieutenant. You followed your orders explicitly. Permit me to congratulate you. Thank you, sir. Outfit. I enlisted in Houston. Just got in this afternoon, some lieutenant gave me this fort. Yeah. That's a lieutenant for you. Well, I enlisted to fight. Well, you'll probably get a chance. How long have you been in the Army? Eleven years. Eleven years? And still only a corporal? Must be the stupidest man in the outfit. Sometimes I'm inclined to agree with you. Watch out, Corporal. You're going to get me set up. Colonel McKenzie, the tune is ready for inspection, sir. What's the matter with you, Private? Oh, it's just the excitement, I think. He's a rookie. He'll be all right. month of April, 1872, near the Rio Grande, West Texas. The same old story repeating itself, frustrating, maddening Ranald McKenzie and his 4th Cavalry. For although McKenzie had established sacred treaties with most of the Indian leaders, still small, unauthorized bands of marauders all too frequently darted into the United States, terrorizing American settlers, burning, stealing, then darted back across the river into Mexico safe from the American military. Give me a hand here. This one's alive. And he's not an Indian. Another problem was now added to the many already confronting Colonel Randall McKenzie. 
For although the boy was not an Indian, as he regained consciousness from his superficial wound, he proved to be an Apache all the way through. He's to be secured. Then have Sam the scout talk to him and have Sam report to my living quarters. Finally got him locked up. How's his wound? Not much. Not as bad as McCullough's. What happened to McCullough? Our engine bit a chunk out of his hand. He's a regular rattlesnake. He's an Apache. He's no more Indian than you are, Colonel. Yeah. Maybe not. He's still an Apache. Has he talked yet? When he's not biting people, all he'll say is his name is Warknife. He's the son of Chief Burning Grass, Colonel. Burning Grass? But I've got a treaty with Chief Burning Grass. A, a treaty of friendship. The old man wouldn't break it. That wasn't the old man, Colonel. That was his adopted son. Probably got a, a few young bucks together just for devilment and to uh, prove that they're grown up men now. Now what have I got myself into? What do I do, hang the Chief's son? Ah, that'll certainly help to pacify the area. Or, or maybe I force him onto a reservation where he can weave baskets. How old would you say that kid is? Fourteen, maybe. I know who he is, Colonel. Before you were stationed at Fort Clark, there was an Apache raid on the Benton place. Killed the Bentons and two hands. Stole a year-old baby. How long ago was that? Thirteen years ago. I see. So, it would appear that our Apache might possibly be a Benton. Appears to add up like it. Benton's brother Abner came out from the east last year and took over the place. He and Mrs. Benton could be this kid's aunt and uncle. But that kid's an Apache. He's been raised an Apache's son, and he's proud of it. How are we going to persuade him now that he's a, a Benton? And how are the Bentons going to persuade him that he's just a, a farm boy? Be quite a scandal in the territory. If you were to treat him like an engine. Flesh and blood, you know. Lieutenant Sanders. Yes, sir? Please take a detail to the Benton place. Present my compliments to Mr. and Mrs. Benton. Tell them I'd consider it a favor if they'd come to my office as soon as they can. Yes, sir. Sometimes I wonder why you fellows take up soldiering. Just seems you can never win. What's in your mind, Colonel? I was just thinking about Chief Burning Grass. Right at this moment down there below the Rio Grande. He's lost a son. I wonder what he's gonna do about it. If I know the Apaches, tomorrow he'll be moving. Tonight he'll be praying. No, no, Maud, this is no time for crying. This is a time for happiness. Oh, I know, I know, Abner. But it brings it all back to me. We were in Philadelphia, Colonel, when we heard about it. The awful tragedy to Abner's brother and sister-in-law. Mackenzie, I'm not one to beat around the bush. I've only been out here in West Texas a year. But I'll be frank to say that I haven't been happy with the reports about you and your outfit. Seems to me that the savages and renegades have been getting away with a lot of outrages in the territory. Oh, no, Abner, do you think this is the I time... I will say, though, that you did a wonderful thing getting the boy back. Best thing you ever did. And I'm going to see to it that they hear about it back in Washington. 
And he will, too. He has friends there. Well, now, Mackenzie, let's get the boy and we'll be on our way. Um, uh, Mr. Benton, perhaps there are one or two things I should explain, uh, before you see Warknife. See who? Warknife. That's the boy's name. It's no such thing. It's Vernon. His mother wrote me right after he was born. He was named Vernon, she said. I beg your pardon. Vernon. I might point out, though, that the boy speaks no English. No English? Then how does he talk? He speaks Apache. He was raised in Apache. Well, what of it? He's still a Benton, our kith and kin. Well, he might disagree with you. He considers himself an Apache. And the Apaches are a very fierce, very proud, very noble nation. What a thing for an American soldier to say. Yes. What are you suggesting, Mackenzie? I'm suggesting, sir, that it might be better to leave the boy in my custody until the proper authorities decide what's best to do with him. Now, you look here, Mr. High and Mighty Soldier. Where that boy is concerned, I am the proper authority, and don't you forget it. Begging your pardon, Mr. Benton. I'll decide what's best to do with him, and that's to take him home with his auntie and his uncle where he belongs. Now, where is he? At the moment, he's in the post jail. Jail? See here, soldier. There's law in this territory. My nephew is not an Indian. He's a free American citizen. And you're holding him against his will and against mine. Now, do you take me to him pronto? Or do I swear out a warrant for your arrest? Please accompany me. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. I'll need Sam to translate for me. Right away, sir. Oh, Abner, what have they done to Vernon? I wanted to warn you, Mrs. Benton. Sam here has been trying to talk to the boy. He's told him that we're his friends. He's told him there are even people here with his blood in this territory. His only answer was that if that were true, he'd open his veins and spill out that blood. Oh, why, he should be ashamed of himself. Make him realize I'm his aunt. Well, Sam tried that too, Mrs. Benton. But uh, Warnife's only answer, that is, Vernon's only answer, was um, not very complimentary. Open that cell. Oh, Abner. No open that cell. Rupert. Now, War Knives. Tell him I too am a chief. Kubani, Tutwa, Ikwa, Mihata, Wolata. He says in that case he will speak only with the chief. All right. Is that so? Boy, you're about to learn some civilized manners. Mackenzie, is he my legal ward or is he not? I asked you a question, Mackenzie. Legally, yes, I suppose he is. Uh, I'm sorry, boy. I've got to teach you not to talk to your auntie that way. I've got to teach you to have some respect for your elders. I'm sorry, boy. Mackenzie, I'm taking my nephew out of this jail. Now, I'm expecting you to give me some help to get him safely to my ranch. Trooper, have the sergeant call out a detail. Tell him to escort Mr. and Mrs. Benton and their nephew to the Benton Ranch. Remain there until further orders. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening, madam. Your move, Colonel. Oh, sorry. Guess I'm not very interested in chess tonight. How'd I get myself into this, Sam? Better I should have left that kid to drown in the river. You couldn't have done that, Colonel. 
war knife a farm boy. Not for long. No, not for long. By tomorrow, the whole Apache nation will know about this. Old Chief Burning Grass will be up here to get his son back, one way or the other. I can't keep a detail on that Benton place forever, but the minute I draw those troopers off, there'll be another massacre. The minute I... Sam. Sam. Chief Burning Grass, do you know where to find him? He'll be on the Mexican side of the river. Can you find him tonight? I can try. Lieutenant Sanders, what you got in mind? Tell you in a minute. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, please order out a patrol immediately. Sixty men. See that four of my raiders are sprinkled among them. We'll leave in ten minutes and we'll ride till dawn. Yes, sir. Now, when the raiders are separated from the main body of troops, it'll be for the purpose of riding south. Pay no attention to any other orders I may give. The raiders will ride south. Yes, sir. And see that each raider carries either a bandana or a neckerchief. Yes, sir. Is that all, sir? No. Order those troopers away from the Benton place. I beg your pardon, sir. Away from the Benton place? You heard me, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Dawn, April 29th, 1872. With a desperate plan in mind, Mackenzie's need for secrecy was absolute. To avoid court-martial, even the majority of his own officers and men must be deceived as to his mission and method. Any change? I haven't dared go in. He hasn't made a sound. The soldiers left during the night. There's not a one of them out there. Ready for your breakfast? Dish up for the boy first. Abner, I wonder if we've done right. Well, he's a Benton. We've done the Christian thing. But that Colonel McKenzie, he seems like a Christian gentleman, too. And I got the feeling he thinks we're doing wrong. Maud, do you think we're wrong? No, Abner. But maybe he belongs with his own people. We're his people, Maud. Remember that. Come on now, let's get the boys breakfast. you something to eat. I told you you'd feel better in those clothes. They look much better, too. Your auntie cooked you up a good breakfast. You'll feel better with something solid between your ribs. Hominy grits, steak, eggs. Hope you like hominy grits. We leave him alone with it, Maud. Remember, he's still strange with us. Like most soldiers charged with subduing the Apaches in 1872, Randall McKenzie constantly found himself torn between duty and his respect for a worthy foe. Now in a dilemma caused mainly by his own vigilance, McKenzie was forced to take desperate measures to extricate himself. Get my horse. Like I said, I don't know why you fellas think I'm soldiering. If I'm not back in an hour, return to the fort. Yes, sir. Burning grass is here. McKenzie will come no closer. 
Mackenzie is content. You have brought much sorrow to my people. And you have brought much sorrow to my people, Chief Burning Grass. But I have not stolen Mackenzie's son. I am here that we may speak of your son, as one chief to another. Then speak, Chief Mackenzie. I never feel right about letting the old man go off alone like that. You have a son, Lieutenant? Yeah. Yeah, he's back in Kansas City with his mama. You love him? What kind of a question is that? Don't forget old Burning Grass loves his son just like you love yours. And he'll do just about anything to get him back. It is right that the father, not strangers, should chide the son. As always, Chief Burning Grass speaks words of great wisdom. Very well, Chief McKenzie. I agree to what you propose. My people will leave what you require there where you stand. And I have the word of Burning Grass as a mighty chief that his warriors will not ride until Mackenzie returns. My word is given. Chief Burning Grass will not regret this. Chief Burning Grass hopes that when next we meet, it shall be as friends again. That is what Chief Mackenzie and his people desire. Mount up. Bring my horse. All right, men. Strip down. Put on those clothes. For the rest of the day, we're going to be Apaches. Lieutenant, have a couple of the men cut some horses' mane. Ought to work pretty well as Apache wigs. Colonel Mackenzie, I'm your friend. It's an unscheduled patrol, sir. Your own troopers, now you have got a scandal. They gotta catch me first.
Tell him he's home. Yo, yo, Hatato. To Banipa, to Hoto, Atila. He says he'll speak well of you or to his father, Chief Burning Glass. Tell him he is too kind. Wulatita, Buragi. Look. All right, Sam. Take a look back up at the river, see if those blue bellies have left yet. We've got to get back to Fort Clark. He said he was on a training patrol, sir, when he happened to pass the Benton place. They chased the Apaches as far as the river, but they got across safely. With war knife. Uh-huh. Lieutenant, give that patrol extra duty. Pretty soon, we've got to start outrunning these Indians for a change. Yes, sir. That's all, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Mr. and Mrs. Benton, I can only apologize to you both and, and thank Providence that those Apaches didn't harm either one of you. I just can't understand it. Also, sir, I won't blame you for any charges you wish to prefer against me. Uh, just a minute, Colonel. I know you feel that you should go and get the boy back. Uh, well, don't. Don't? And let these, these savages get away with it? I know, I know, but Maud and me, we talked it over, and, well, it seems to us that he's better off right where he is. With his own people. But what will Washington say? Well, don't you worry about Washington. I won't say a word to them. The Colonel, the less said about the whole thing, the better. Thank you, Mr. Benton. Thank you very much, sir. You're, uh... You're too kind. Fort Clark, along the border country of southwest Texas. The year, 1873. Following a hurricane and flood which struck the Fort Clark area, Colonel Ranald McKenzie was faced with one of the strangest problems of his career. The flooded Rio Grande River, southern boundary of the United States, sliced into the Henderson Ranch, placing a section of the American-owned property on the Mexican side of the border. The changed course of the river turned the Henderson property into a vulnerable island. How much of Ben Henderson's land is affected? Any considerable amount? Well, I wouldn't think so, sir. Of course, I didn't cross the New River to see exactly how much. Oh, no, no, of course not. Just a few acres, I'd say, eight or ten, perhaps. Unfortunately, his house is on them. Yeah. If I know Ben Henderson, this is going to mean trouble, Mark. Unfortunately, it's the kind of trouble we can't handle at the local level. I wish that courier would get here from Washington and we'd know how to proceed. Well, shall I try and get a message to Henderson, ask him to come in and see you? I don't think that'll be necessary. Henderson will visit us soon enough, without invitation. All right, Mark. Now, don't you worry, Jenny. I'll come back just as soon as I can. Don't start any trouble, Ben Henderson. I'm sure Colonel McKenzie will understand, but not if you go losing your temper. Mr. Henderson's here, sir. 
Oh, have him come in. This way, sir. Hello, Ben. Nice to see you. Any word from Washington yet, Colonel? Uh, no, no word yet, Ben. Uh, here, <clears throat> have a chair. Sit down, I'd like to talk to you. Got nothing to talk about. There's only one side to this argument. That's my home, me and my folks, like it always was, and we're not budging an inch. Oh, now, Ben, Ben, sensible men always have something to talk about. Come on, sit down, please. I've been patient, Colonel. You know I have. You've had plenty of time to hear from Washington. Yes, I have had time, but who knows better than you that communication sometimes break down out here. This is a highly unusual situation, Ben. It's one that may have to be resolved by our State Department communicating with the Mexican government. And I'm sure it will be resolved. But in the meantime, I've got to ask you to move your wife and your employees out of Mexico. It ain't Mexico. I don't care what anyone says. It's my property and it's part of the United States like it always has been. All right, Ben. All right. I agree with you and I'm sure Washington will. I'm just asking you to be patient for a little while longer for your own sake. What if Washington says you can't help me? That it's part of the Mexican territory and I've got to get out? You know the answer to that. You can't expect me to go against orders. I expect you to protect American citizens, that's what. To protect the property my folks fought and died for. It ain't just land, Mackenzie. It ain't just an old house with a few acres of sagebrush. My ma and pa are buried there. Me and my wife, a little baby was born there. The only one we had. His grave is there, too. You want me to turn my back and, on my own flesh and blood, something that's part of me? You want me to turn back on my own little son? Ben, that's the last thing I'm asking you to do. I'm just asking you to leave that land, your own land. I'll admit that. Leave it just until I hear from Washington. I won't do it, Mackenzie. But, Ben, you don't seem to realize you're in a dangerous spot down there. Anything can happen. I couldn't help hearing, sir. You won't listen, will he? No. I can't say that I really blame him. Come on in, Mark. Shut the door. I was just thinking. Until that courier does show up, I don't have orders to protect Ben, but on the other hand, I don't have orders not to protect him. The Raiders, sir? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm ready to take the risk. I'll have to decide that when and if it becomes necessary. Henderson's in a terrible spot down there, Paul. I can't imagine a worse spot. The Mexican government won't protect him, and officially I can't. Well, he's free game for anybody that wants to make trouble. Yeah, Mark. Have the Raiders stand by for immediate duty. Yes, sir. Raiders, pass the word. Raiders, stand ready. I got no right to keep you here, Jenny. You say the word and we'll leave. No, Ben. They were my folks, too. They... It was my baby. Jenny. We'll stay until you say the word to go. That's the way you feel about it. That's the way I feel, Ben. Ben. Any luck with Mackenzie? Yeah, bad. He says he can't help us. Well, that's kind of a surprise, coming from Mackenzie. Well, that's the way it is. You fellas want to have supper now or wait till the rest of the boys ride in? 
What's the matter? Where are the rest of the boys? There aren't any, Ben. They, they ain't coming. Well, good riddance. What's keeping you two around, waiting for your pay? Ben, don't talk like that. We appreciate you staying, Ted. You all go get washed up, and I'll warm up your supper. Well, you do that, Ted. We're proud to have you stay with us. You know, why tell me? Where are we going to get help? Mackenzie, maybe. If he knows how bad off we are. Well, if, if you want to try. It ain't a case of wanting. It's got to be done. The idea, Jack. That was one of our own boys you shot. You know a better way of getting rid of him? Well, no, but why? What did he do? He didn't do what I told him, but I told all you fellows. I want these folks here to send for help. I want Mackenzie to come a-running, all full of fire and high spirits. Got some real special plans for Mr. Mackenzie. Him and me is going to have a nice little party together. Well, I'd kind of like to make sure I got things straight myself, Jack. You mean we don't really aim to hurt them Hendersons none? Just uh, sort of keep them pinned down for bait? Well, we can shoot them up a little. Got to make it look like a fire that Mackenzie might get wise. We'll save the real fireworks for later, after he's walked into the trap. Well, whatever you say, Jack, you're the boss. You just keep remembering that, and everything will be all right. Mackenzie and Lieutenant Summers rode out to the Henderson Ranch to determine the immediate threat to the occupants. Ben Henderson's hands. Ted. Ted, what happened? Was it outlaws? We let the folks spin down in the house. Just one hand left to help him. How many outlaws? Ted. Uh, Ted? How many? I don't know. They kept the cover mostly. I got a glimpse of one of them. Who, who was it? Who was it, Ted? Who'd you see? Corey. Jack Corey. Corey. It's plain now, Lieutenant. The Hendersons are just bait to get me into Mexico. I'm not sure I understand, sir. Happened before you were posted to Fort Clark. I had to arrest Corey's younger brother. He was eventually hanged. Corey always blamed me for it. Said he'd get me if it was the last thing he ever did. Well, then if it's simply a trap for you, does that mean he won't harm the Hendersons? On the contrary. He'll kill them in the most painful way he can think of. He doesn't need a reason. To him, killing is its own reason. 
Lieutenant will be using those raiders. The word had been passed. Secretly, the raiders rode out of Fort Clark to their rendezvous point on the American side of the river. Once again, it was Mackenzie's decision to break the rules, to cross into Mexico, to shoulder the terrible risks necessary to protect the lives of American citizens. All here. All right. Let's go. Fine, don't you worry about me. You don't look yourself. I've never seen you look so peaked before. Yeah. <laughs> it's only natural, isn't it? I've never fought outlaws before. I'm real sorry I talked you into this, Jenny. We should have pulled out like Mackenzie said. You never talked me into it. And don't you worry about me or anything else. I know Colonel Mackenzie's going to help us. <laughs> Well, I I'm just fine. You go on in there and cover that window. <laughs> we shouldn't have too much trouble infiltrating the line they've got around that house. We shouldn't, but don't count on it. I don't want to have to saddle pack any of you back to Fort Clark. But if everybody's clear as to what we're going to do, I'll lead out. The rest of you follow by the numbers. What about Smith, sir? You don't know how to count. Maybe we better save the jokes till later, after we've done our job. You know what the boss said, let him in the house. Cover the side windows. Thank you for coming, Colonel. I'm very grateful. No, never mind about that. What I want to know is, when were you expecting this baby? Two months, three? Well, two, three months. Between two and three, that ought to be about right. It's awful premature, isn't it? I mean, it isn't going to be all right. Of course it's going to be all right. Now, we're going to figure out a way of getting you out of here back across the river. Can't have an event like this happening on foreign soil. 
be frank with me, Colonel. There isn't any way out, is there? You just wait and see. Now get rested up for the trip. Ben. Uh, Lieutenant. Ben, your baby. It's going to be born sooner than you expected. Oh, we've got to get a doctor then. No, no, I don't think so. I think it's better to let her rest now. The baby's going to be premature, Ben. But she's a strong woman. Under the right circumstances, she'll be all right. Oh, I gotta get help. I'll go get a doctor. I'll no. get this town. No, Ben, no doctor. She's got to do without a doctor. If if we can just get her back across the river, someplace where she'll feel safe, be safe. Do you have a springboard, any kind of wagon that we could carry her in? Yeah, the barn's in the back. Corey's men are mostly on this side between here and the river, but how are we gonna swing it? How can we do it? I don't know, I don't know. To answer that, we'll have to know how many men Corey has and how they're deployed. If we knew that, we... Ben, 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 take it easy. Easy, take it easy. What do you mean my wife's in there dying? You tell me to take it easy. Oh, your voice down. Now, listen, I'll tell you what we're going to do, Mackenzie. You and me, we're cutting out of here. We're going back to the fort. You're going to order out your men. Enough to run those outlaws away. Put that pistol away, Ben. You do it or I'll kill you. You put that pistol away, Ben. <laughs> I know you're in there. I let you in on purpose. Now you're pinned down. What are you going to do? I'll give the Henderson safe passage across the river if you and your men come out with your hands up. Lieutenant. See that all the approaches to the house are covered. We won't make a move until it's dark. Yes, sir. I'm gonna have a look around outside. When I open that door, dim the light. Yes, sir. All right. This is the house we're in. Now, seemingly, the only fire against it is directed from these three positions. Seemingly. That's what Corey wants us to think. Actually, his men are spelling each other. The rest of his group is somewhere over in here, ready to relieve or support these three men. How many altogether, sir? Six, seven, I'd say, maybe eight. If we try to charge those skunks, it cut us to pieces. That's right. A charge would play right into Corey's hands. That's why we're not going to charge. You got your pet with you? Jessup. All right. Now, you three men will move against these positions. Take these men at their firing positions. In the meantime, Lieutenant, you move into a position where you can cover the rest of the men over here. Get the drop on them. Yes, sir. In the meantime, I'll be trying to find Corey. Sorry, Ben. You and your man here will have to hold things down. Move from window to window. Keep firing, but fire high. My men and I will be out there someplace. Well, what are you going to do? There's no time to explain now. If it works, you'll know about it. If it doesn't work, it won't matter. All right, let's go.
and Mrs. Henderson's condition, the rescued and their rescuers were delayed in reaching the fort. And Mackenzie learned belatedly of the arrival of good news from Washington. Mexico conceded America's claim to the cutoff land. It was to be fully protected until the river reverted to its original course and protection became unnecessary. All right, Mr. Henderson. Colonel! Colonel! It's a boy, Colonel McKenzie. You hear a boy? Jenny just had a boy. Don't say. Well, congratulations. Thanks for telling me. Well, it's all right. I wanted you to be the first to know. Uh, 